running, running, running down the stairs into the studio. Wow, welcome. I'll get a little bit closer first of all. All right, here I am, Junie T. Just waiting for my participants to come in. Oh, beautiful, holy cat. Yay. Good, good, good. Checking, checking, checking. Checking, checking, checking. June, have fun. Cat is watching. Thank you very much, Lee. Awesome. Do I have to be right on the dot of two o'clock? Or, yes, we will, because people will want to come in at about one minute to two. All right, going back onto my mat. It's warm in here today, which is really, really nice. The sun is coming through. I'll just sit here waiting for everyone to come in. And then I'll read them a story once they come in. I'm visualizing them all coming in the door and coming in just a little bit late, but that's okay. I'm going to close my eyes and take a couple of breaths because I'm actually quite nervous. Fill up my belly, fill up my body, breathing in and breathing out, breathing in. Yeah, I can feel my heart racing, breathing in, in a nice way, and breathing out. One more. I've got a couple of minutes. So in the interim, while you're all walking in, I'll just give you some beautiful vibrations coming from my crystal bowl. to first of all just read you a little story before we move into the asana part of our practice. So I'll give you just a couple of minutes to just make sure that you're comfortable and feel free to if you're at home as we know that we all are bring in a blanket maybe to pop over the top of you maybe even just a small towel if you haven't got an eye bag just cover your eyes this is a beautiful story and I'd like to share it with you before we begin our practice. It's a Hindu story. The tiny newborn silkworm eats enormous amounts of mulberry leaves and grows rapidly. He eats and he eats and he eats. Eventually he eats so many mulberry leaves that he falls into a deep sleep. He begins to roll around in sleep, feeling uncomfortable from his full belly and drool. His drool turns into silk thread, and as he rolls around, he entraps himself into this cocoon of thread. He wakes up and realizes that he has entrapped himself in a cage of his own making. So he then decides to turn over a new leaf. He fasts, he meditates, and he goes into hibernation. He decides not to live a selfish life and to carefully discriminate before accepting anything in the future. 
At this point, he begins to sprout wings. These wings help him to cut through the cocoon. And the curtain of illusion and the worm, now a silk moth, flies free. We learn through our yoga practice of discrimination and non-attachment. Eventually our store of karma is used up and we fly free because we have been totally able to let go of the fruits of our actions and of our illusion that we are the doer. We fly free because there is no longer a doer, an act of doing or an object. I think appropriate for where we are each today. And I thank you, Swami and Sachananda. And we'll bring hands to prayer, we'll bow our heads. Namaste. Allow yourself time to move from here in the center of being in this amazing bubble as you allow yourself to come into child pose. In your more traditional form, to allow the forehead to the third eye to touch the ground, the shoulders to relax down deep into the ground, and just allow yourselves to be absorbed into Mother Earth. Being grateful and allowing your body to feel all of what is happening for your body right now. We'll emerge out of this child pose to come into extended puppy. And keeping the hips away from the heels but driving the hips back. Leading the chest now down deep into Mother Earth. Allowing maybe the chin or the forehead to touch the floor. Taking big breaths. As we fill, we empty. We fill and we empty more. We fill and we keep refilling until we are full. Energy, prana, that life force that we need to now be just experiencing as we allow ourselves to release this body. Now walking your hands back un underneath your shoulders and coming into cat pose. Navel to spine and chin to your chest, lifting up and opening all through the muscles of the body. And keeping in your cat pose, tucking your toes under to lift up those hips into your first downward facing dog. I want you to feel the energy, so keep on breathing in and out through your nose. So you can move to look to the left, you can move to look to the right. You can move to look out to the front, you can move to look out to the back. And you pause, but you breathe. And then you'll adjust your down dog, maybe you make it a little bit longer, so you've got a little bit more work to do, you've got a little bit more time to feel the muscles releasing, so release the head, the neck, soften through the shoulders and feel the power as you draw up from Mother Earth through your arms to your back all the way over the hips and down through the legs to your feet. Return to child pose and take your option if you wish to just go back in traditional child pose or if you want to have hips open a little bit more, nice easy extension. Breathe here into the back of your body. Fill up your lungs and let all thoughts now slowly dissolve. No longer needed as you just focus on yourself and on your body. So from here, just lifting up, just moving your hands back enough and having enough space here through the hips to come through this variation or thread the needle. So your left elbow comes right across the front of your body, sits just in front of your right knee. You release the arm, but we'll pull our head back and we'll let those right elbows come back to the floor. You'll try and encourage the left elbow to go back down to the ground. And just tucking your chin in, but not allowing your head to just drop to the floor. Close your eyes to feel We lift up off that right elbow and we bring that left arm back through. We'll come back into extended puppy. Take plenty of time. Maybe move a little further forward. Maybe allow the chest to come down a little bit deeper. 
Make sure here that you're still moving your hips back, pushing your feet down, surrendering down into the earth. We walk back, come back into tabletop, come back into that extended child pose, and now bring that right arm across, elbow just in front of the knee. Arm releases, head comes back, left elbow goes down with the right shoulder. Hopefully, just wait and just feel your body just release. Lifting back up and then bringing that arm all the way back through. Pull those knees back in. Tuck your toes under, come back into cat. On that next breath, if it's going in, whether it's going out, allow and ask your body, where does that breath want to take you as we lift back into downward facing dog? Again, to allow yourself time to lengthen out that downward facing dog. And keep the power coming up through the hands, the arms, to the back, to the hips over the hips down straight through the backs of your legs and coming forward into strong plank working the legs big breath to take us back into downward facing dog and coming forward again into plank bringing out the chest softening across the back and the shoulders big breath to take us all the way back into downward facing dog again so high off the heels here and scoop it like cat. And then out comes the head, out goes the chest and back over the hips and the heels go down. Heels come back up, scoop it up like cat. Head comes out, chest goes forward, hips take your heels back down to the ground. Come forward into plank, hover, and land safely. And now just to breathe. Take your elbows out to the side. Take your head to the side. Two breaths. Bring your head back to the center. Off to the other side. Just changing in your own time. Just feeling your way through your shoulders, through your necks. Check back into your mind. And then forehead sitting on your hands. Keeping those feet and those legs all the way up to your hips. Grabbing your mat, not holding your breath. And as we allow ourselves to lift out the chest, coming into lotus pose. Now to fly the lotus, look out, explore. Bring the arms back through, hands back to forehead, release that body back to the floor. Full belly breaths here as you breathe in and out through the nose. Releasing any pressure, any tension in the back of the hips. Take your time as we come back into lotus pose. So forehead to the hands. Legs active from your feet. Everything lifts away from the ground. We're flying high. Breathe as we open the chest. Sit the shoulders back. And this time we'll lift up the legs just a little bit. Just to allow us to lift the chest up a little bit more. To fly a little bit further. Gracefully. Come on back down to the ground. Take four breaths. While you're lying on your belly, breathing in and out through your nose, to allow this crystal bowl to send out another vibration 
that vibration to go back to Mother Earth, to tell her that we are knowing how she's feeling. With our help, she will get better, just as the koala bears have gone back into their homeland. just in the small cobra, then lifting up the hips and taking them back towards those heels. Let's take a moment here. When you're ready, come to tabletop to tuck those toes under to find your downward facing dog again. Have your feet a little bit wider if you wish. Take your time to feel the legs and feel your power, the hands, the arms, the feet through the legs and all that full torso, the front, the back and the sides. As you extend your right knee up towards the ceiling, three-legged dog, leg out to the hands. Look back to the leg. Follow it as it comes through to the inside of your hands. Take the scissor as your little right hip goes back and your left heel goes down. Hands can go wide, fold forward, surrender. You come forward to bend back into the front leg to drop your back heel to come up into warrior one. We all need to feel like warriors, supporting each other. We come forward to bring those hands back to the floor, just slip off the heel and then step that right foot back into downward facing dog. Plenty of time. Maybe turn the hands over, check your wrists, maybe move the feet, maybe closer, maybe a little further back depending on how you're feeling today. So coming up off the heels to extend your left leg up, it goes three-legged dog. Looking out to the hands and driving hips back. Look back for the leg. Watch it as you bring it through to the inside of your hands. Nice low lunge. Easy scissor. Hips are going up and back. Forward fold, surrender. And coming back through, bending into the front leg, dropping your back heel down. Plenty of time to come up into warrior one. So crescent moon the chest. Close the eyes if you can, or just find a spot just in front of your nose. And coming forward, bringing the hands back to the floor, lifting up off the heel and coming back into downward facing dog. So you're just stepping your right foot through to the inside of your hands, turning around, and I'll keep on turning around, until we find wide angle. With your feet parallel and your hands finding your ankles, and fold forward here with your head coming in to look in between your legs. Opening the hips, opening through the back, the shoulders. If it feels okay, depending on how long or short your legs are or your torso, allow your elbows to come to the floor and just relax those shoulders. Keep them back away from falling down on your ears. When we come up out of here, nice and slowly, and turn to that right foot to create the lunge. So making sure that the heel is off the floor here. And then as we come through warrior lunge, keep low and deep. We'll take the knee to the floor just to feel the stretch into the thigh. 
Then we'll lift the hips back up and lengthen the leg. Bring out the chest. Arms come forward, hands going down to the floor. Then come back into your wide angle. Reset your feet. If you want them out a little bit, then that's fine. In a little bit if you need to feel a little bit more work into your inner thighs. Take hold of your ankles when you're ready and fold in. Hands or elbows come back to the floor, folding in a little bit deeper if it's comfortable. Don't have to. Hands can stay to the ankles. Hands can stay on your hips. So long as you're looking in between your legs and your shoulders haven't fallen down towards your ears. So take your time. And then looking out, turn around to the left. So finding your lunge now with your left foot in the front, your right leg out the back, and come up into your warrior lunge. Take plenty of time. Lowering the knee to feel the stretch from the hip into the thigh, it doesn't have to touch the floor. You want to pull it back up though, lengthen it out. Arms coming forward, hands going back down to the floor. Turn back around into a wide angle. So placing your left hand onto the mat in between your feet, slightly forward or back, depending on where your leg is with your shoulder. As you rotate now to look to your right, to extend the arm if you wish, hand to the hip if you wish, wrap the arm around the back, maybe even find the thigh. Arm releases, make sure that it's moving through the back, changing sides. Now move your torso, move the hips a little if you need to. Just kind of like play with this first. Some of us can't extend those arms and open that chest enough, so just let the arm float. Let it wrap if you can get a little bit more space. The intercostal muscles release as the ribcage softens, lungs fill up, and then we come back to the centre. Let's take that forward fold and release. As we come out. Hands to the floor, just in front of the chest. Walk your feet in, heel toe, heel toe. Have the feet slightly pointed out, heels in. Heels come up, we drop down. Good. A little bit of balance to challenge us this afternoon. Hands come to prayer. Chest sits back, takes the shoulders back. We take the hands back to the floor, see if you can drop your heels and see if you can sit in between your heels. Get your arms the inside of your legs. Just close your eyes. Come into your body. Saying thank you to your body. Reminding us that we have to continually say thank you to our bodies. For all that they do, often without us asking, and of course, never to appreciate how much they do. Now take your time as we come out of here, hands back to the floor, lifting up those hips, turning yourselves around, and then stepping that left foot back into downward facing dog. If you went the other way, doesn't matter. Now surrender back to child pose. And again, whichever variation, hips open, hips close, foreheads, elbows, fists, wherever you can come back into.
into just moving through what our bodies just came through. Have your muscles reacted? How is your breathing? Checking back in every element. Stay as you are for at least 10 breaths. Keep the breath flowing through the body. Sense it, feel its movement. Nothing more important than where we each are right now in this body. Breathing this life force of energy, moving it to that deepest level, at that cellular level. Slowly and in your own time. When you come out of your child pose, try and allow yourself to think about that you're a Meraki boulder. I love this because suddenly the tide's been in and it's covered us and we've just emerged out of the ocean, all nice and clean, all nice and shiny. All right, and coming back in to tabletop. And taking your time out as we do a little bit more work in to the hips. And then we'll come back to sit to just release those shoulders. So tucking your toes under and into downward facing dog we go. Now, I love this little sequence. So I want you just to take your time. No three-legged dogs are quiet. But if you have that kind of like feeling that you want to throw the leg in the air, just be graceful about it taking it out there. If it doesn't want to go, then that's fine. So your right foot coming to the outside of your right hand. So it's a big open lunge. To come back to find a pigeon pose, slip it back, pull it across. So the knee behind your right hand, that right heel in line with your left hip. And as we allow ourselves to move towards the ground, so I want you to focus on your target being that release through your hips and your buttocks. But try and imagine that you're a worm now as you reach and you reach and you reach and then suddenly you can feel a tiny little bit more release. Now without being the head to the floor, see how far the chest has come down. And then from this pigeon pose, we'll walk our hands back. We'll bring this left leg all the way across. So you can sit that left foot, turn back around here, over that right thigh, with your right arm wrapping around your left leg. Hand to the back or hand to the floor. Good. Use this as a prop initially to just lift you up. Option now. And I'll turn around here so you might see how I come into this big shoulder stretch. So I fly over the leg to get this arm right in underneath the knee. And then my left arm comes around to catch the hand and I'm looking out the side. Now it's just a deeper catch, opening the chest, deeper twist, massaging into those internal organs. Big breath. If your ribcage and your intercostal muscles start to complain, just soften in through the back to the chest and say it's okay. And then release and come all the way back around to the seater. So the left leg that you've got across, take it out the back and return back into pigeon on the same side. So your right leg is still in the front, left leg's still gone out the back. Move your body and hopefully it goes a little further forward. Can we bring the chest a little closer? 
Now that's all relative to our bodies. Always remember your flexibility, not my flexibility. So if you need to be here, if you need to be here, then that's also fine. Now to change sides, so let's tuck the toes under. This is your left foot. Walking those hands right in. So we can lift the hips up, bringing up both knees, and then getting that back foot back into downward facing dog. I'm just going to turn around here now. So I want you to feel the difference between each side. Try not to collapse down into the elbows and into the shoulders. So a strong drive back. And use Mother Earth here. Okay, you allow her to give you as much security as you're giving her back the security that she needs. When you really bring that left foot to the outside of your left hand, big long lunge. Pull it back, slip it into pigeon, slide your right knee back. So work from the hips first, back to the heel, and then from the hips to the shoulders as the arms walk you forward and then surrendering so remember target hips and buttocks a little bit of hamstring there into mr piriformis now move around roll around but keep your extended leg out the back really active as well So while we're in pigeon pose, can you go back to the story? The story about the worm that turned into the silk moth. We're all like that. Think about how we are all homestaying, as I like to call it, rather than being in lockdown. That sounds so harsh. It sounds like we're chained here, but we're not. Just allow yourself to kind of like gracefully accept why we're all having to do what we're doing right now. Let's walk back and let's bring this right leg across. Take plenty of time. I'll sit on an angle here. Good. So easy wrap is left arm. Good. Elbow below knee. We take the turn, torso. Hand to set you up if you need to. And then once you're anchored down here into the ground, bring that hand into the back. Feel the spine all the way from your tailbone. Breathe deep here. Feel the massaging that's going on. Allow yourself to feel that rotation. On this side, you might be able to create a little bit more space. And we come back around to the center and take your time. Did you want to do and try that option with that arm and shoulder again? So remember, it's like you're really having to stretch up and you're really having to go under. So you go over and under. Here's the hand. And here comes the right arm around to find the hand that's gone underneath. And it's sitting over the thigh underneath your knee. About attach maybe a bit more to your hamstring. Always remember if the release is not allowing you to come like you're struggling, just soften, back it off, and we'll come out of here now. So here's your right leg, there's your left leg. Take the right leg back, left leg stays tucked in and come back into pigeon. So move a little, creep a little, and then surrender all. And notice how one side might allow you to come deeper and further across. And that's okay. Now as we walk back and tucking those toes under, lifting up off your right knee, your left knee coming up as we've lifted up those hips and back into downward facing dog we go. 
Five breaths. Ten breaths. You might be breathing fast. You might be breathing slow. Feel your body now. From the first down dog to this downward facing dog. Tension in the shoulders. Release your necks. Allow yourself to feel all the strength. And when you're ready, surrender back to child pose. Take plenty of time. So now if you remember the vibration from the singing bowl, it's your breath now doing the same through your body. So that strong, long, smooth breath resonating now to creating your own body's vibration as you breathe with that power. So you stay in child pose for about five more breaths. Awesome work, everyone. Now, because we're all breathing at different lengths, okay, just giving you also enough transition time now. So we're going to come back, but as you transition over onto your mat, come to sitting into staff pose. Good. Now, a quite a challenging and often awkward pose for many of us, but I'm hoping that we've done enough rotations, we've done enough work through the hamstrings, that this will allow us to take our forward folds with a little bit of ease. So taking your legs out, which will give us that release through the hips, and just kind of like, just relax your feet a little bit. Don't over tense them as you maybe just drive those heels forward. As you come forward from the hips, I want you to scoop this first, okay? So as you draw your navel to your spine, you're coming down towards the ground. So the shoulders have rolled forward, so has your head. So some of us will be able to get those elbows to the floor. Some of you will still be up here. But just make sure you're not trying to pull your head and your shoulders. Make sure that you're moving from the hips. When you've found your place where the elbows are on the floor or off the floor, you start to lift out the chest. And tucking the chin in to lengthen through the spine. Now, any time you start to feel that this is uncomfortable and you're starting to pull, I want you to just pull back, scoop it round through the spine. Just takes that pressure off it landing all the way back into that lower back. Those of you that are a little bit more flexible, you just walk a little further forward. Now you're looking down to the floor. It's almost like we're searching for something in the ground. Maybe that tiny little flower that's going to pop up and find your nose on the flower. So how close can you come to the flower? And suddenly it's right there at your third eye space. So you want to tuck your chin in. You want to breathe. Each out breath to surrender you a little bit deeper into your pose. Take plenty of time. And you want to feel the hamstrings and you want to feel those inner thighs. You don't want to feel your back. As you walk back, keep that nice strong engagement happening and then pull your legs in. Sitting firmly into your sitting bones, drawing your right knee to your chest 
and finding the foot. And drawing the foot up, knee to nose. Or not, as I always say. So focus on trying to drive the heel. Feel that stretch into your lower calves. And bringing your knee towards you. Feel primarily some calf, a little bit of hamstring, never any back here, okay? So we take your time. We release, but we bend to bring this into sitting tree. Shuffle around. And then as we did before, you can scoop to roll, to come forward. Or if you're not as tight, just come from the hips and allow yourself to fold. Quiet space. Listen to any thoughts that might want to pop into your head. Any stuff that might want to surface to the top of your body. Letting it go here into the mat, into the earth. Come forward to surrender. And as you return out of that pose, just keep your focus and your concentration as you extend the legs and you give them a shake. Let's bring the left knee to the chest. Find the foot. Extend the leg. Now remember, each side a little bit different. So on this side, I'm just going to open my right side a little bit, okay, so I can keep this one in an easy angle. And maybe it's going to be forehead to shin rather than knee to nose. So bend the leg if you need to rather than overextend. The breath is our key. Remember, this is life. As we release, to bring this into sitting tree. And again, shuffle around as much as you need. Even maybe sit the foot underneath your thigh if you need to. It just takes a little bit of pressure off that hamstring. When you're ready, come forward, protecting the knees. Come back, slowly, good, allow yourself to be aware of the two sides. As we scoop around now, pull both those knees to your chest, find those two anchoring points, bringing those knees in nice and close. Now I know some of you aren't quite happy when we go into, say, this particular version of boat pose. I like it so because we can hold on to the feet, so there's no pressure into the back. But you've got to bring your body as close to your thighs as possible to find the feet, to pull the heels up off the ground. So they just should come up as you take a little movement back that you are still back in your sitting bones. Now I like to open the hips, it's almost like sitting happy baby. And with the hips a little bit more open, then we can start to extend the legs. Good. Bring the chest in, look out, try and close your eyes here and explore the opening. Feel the breath come up from the belly to the third eye space. Well, you've got plenty of space now, but not to just do jigsaw puzzles, but to find our way back into our bodies, helping Mother Earth do this job that she so needed to do a bit further away. She thought that no, she needed to do it ASP. So let's bring feet together into butterfly. Shuffle, shuffle. Now remember, butterfly, butterfly. We are going to fly. Not right now, but later on when we're all ready. So surrender and come forward.
So our last pose for our practice this afternoon is bridge pose. Relevant. A little bit like the story. A little bit like the butterfly wings. We are preparing to fly. So don't fly too fast, otherwise you'll go crashing back down to the ground. So release from your butterfly. Pull those knees back in. Shuffle up enough to the top of your mat so you can roll back down through the spine. Pause for a moment. Breath in the belly. Now, easy bridge. Okay, pushing feet down, lifting hips up. Just lift out that chest. Close your eyes. The pathway between your mind and your body. Using your breath, breathing in and breathing out. All that is now as it should be. If you place your hands around your rib cage, hopefully you just feel that softness. Fill up your bellies, no sucking in. Now when you're ready to release down, come from the top to the bottom. So you can feel each vertebrae as you're coming all the way back down to the floor. Now, you can remain here with your legs bent. You can allow yourself to come into corpse pose. Starfish if you need a little bit more space. And close your eyes and surrender. Shavasana, corpse pose. I want you to now allow this pose to be about new life, new beginnings. That is, I saw this afternoon the koala bears returning back into their natural habitat. Think of what happened and how the transition of now is for those koala bears to return back home. So I want you to think of our bodies as being in the same place right now. A lot of work still to be done with ourselves, with the world. But importantly, allow yourself to come into this place of yours, into your heart centre, heart chakra, your own house. Breathe in and breathe out. Now before our time is up, so just keeping my eye on the time, allow yourselves to come to sit, to close your eyes, to bring your hands to the heart centre. Now as we bow our heads, we'll say thank you to our bodies for honour, breath and life together. And all of those people that are out there that are maybe struggling with what is happening in our world right now. So we'll send them love and compassion. And then back into your own body, love and compassion twofold. And then when you're ready, Start to just quietly, slowly open your eyes, bring your heads back to somewhere on your shoulders. And to all my people out there, namaste. Yay. One big gong. Now, if by chance that sound is a little bit too loud, please let me know, because it's kind of like okay in here 
and I can sense it coming up through the floor, but hearing wise, no music. But that might be just a little bit too intense, so please let me know. Otherwise, everyone, have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Tune in on Sunday. I will be back.